Do you know how much NASA paid for a single space shuttle launch? $1.5 billion per flight. SpaceX is doing it today for a fraction of that cost. And they're using the same rocket again and again. On Monday, they made history, and almost nobody is talking about it. It was Monday evening, December 8, 2025, at 5.26 p.m. Eastern Time. Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Yes, the very same launch pad where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin departed for the moon. But this time, something was different. This time, a Falcon 9 rocket with the tail number B-167 stood ready on the pad. And this rocket? It knew this journey very well. It was its 32nd flight to space. 32 times. Let that sink in for a moment. The entire space shuttle program, with five different orbiters over 30 years, completed 135 missions. This one rocket has already accomplished nearly a quarter of that by itself. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this so significant? Think back to the Apollo era. Each Saturn V cost roughly $1.2 billion in today's money. After every launch, whether successful or not, it ended up in the Atlantic Ocean. Done, thrown away, just like a disposable rocket was supposed to work. The space shuttle was the first attempt to change that. And yes, the orbiters flew multiple times, but at what cost? After each flight, they required months of overhaul. Every launch cost $1.5 billion. The economics simply didn't work. We learned that reusability was harder than anyone imagined. SpaceX does it completely differently. This B-1067 rocket, it lands itself. Nine minutes after launch, it touches down gently on a drone ship in the Atlantic. Then it's inspected, refueled, and ready to fly again in just a few weeks. The cost, a fraction of what NASA spent. And here's the part that really gives me goosebumps. SpaceX is currently testing whether they can fly their boosters 40 or even 50 times. Imagine that, a rocket that launches hundreds of satellites over its lifetime. We're not talking about science fiction anymore. We're talking about economics. We're talking about making space accessible, but it gets even better. This Monday mission, Starlink 692, carried a second historic milestone on board. It deployed the 3,000th Starlink satellite that SpaceX has launched this year in 2025, 3,000, let me put that in perspective for you. From 1957 to 2000, that's 43 years of spaceflight history, humanity launched about 6,000 satellites total. SpaceX accomplished half of that in 2025 alone. We're building a global internet network in orbit right now. Over 7,000 Starlink satellites currently circle the Earth, bringing high-speed internet to people in remote areas. Mountain villages in the Andes, islands in the Pacific, rural farms in Montana, all connected, this isn't just spaceflight. This is the democratization of space. This is about bringing opportunities to people who never had them before. Now, some of you are probably wondering, how do they do it? How can a rocket fly 32 times? The answer lies in engineering brilliance and the courage to try something completely new. The Falcon 9 isn't a throwaway rocket. It's built like an airplane. Strong materials, redundant systems, and here's where it gets exciting. It can land itself. Remember those science fiction movies from the 60s? Rockets landing vertically? That's exactly what SpaceX does. Nine Merlin engines slow the rocket down, grid fins control its orientation, and deployable landing legs catch it. The first attempts? Spectacular explosions. SpaceX released an entire video of landing failures and learned from every single one. Today they land with a success rate of over 95%. B-167 now has 32 perfect landings under its belt. That's more precise than most pilots land their airplanes. Here's why this matters, not just for SpaceX, but for all of us. Imagine if, back in the 70s, Boeing had thrown away every 747 after each transatlantic flight. Flying would have remained unaffordable, only for the super wealthy. That's exactly what's happening with spaceflight right now. SpaceX is reducing costs so dramatically that suddenly things become possible that were dreams before. Universities can now afford to launch their own research satellites. Developing nations are building their own space programs. Private companies are planning missions to the moon and Mars. The barrier to entry is dropping every year. And the next chapter, SpaceX's Starship, the largest rocket ever built, is designed to be completely reusable, both stages. If they succeed, and the first test flights have been promising, we could soon see regular flights to Mars, not in some distant future in our lifetime. For the generation that experienced Apollo, this must feel surreal. We went to the moon, and then we stopped. We retreated. For decades, it seemed like humanity's greatest adventure had ended. Now, we're preparing for the next giant leap. And this time, we're not just visiting, 
We're building infrastructure to stay. B1067, a serial number. For most people, just letters and numbers on a rocket. But to me, it's a symbol. A symbol that the dreams of the Apollo generation didn't die, they just evolved, they matured. The engineers who built the Saturn V dreamed of reusable rockets. They had the vision, but not the technology. Now, five decades later, their successors have made that dream reality. Not through government programs with unlimited budgets, but through private enterprise, innovation, and relentless determination. When you watched the moon landing on television in the 60s, you knew you were witnessing history. What happened on Monday will be in history books too. Not with the same drama as Apollo 11, perhaps, but with just as much significance. Because this time, we're not building rockets for one mission. We're building infrastructure for the future, for our children and grandchildren. 32 flights, and the journey has only just begun. SpaceX has over 100 Falcon 9 rockets in their fleet, each one flying multiple times, each one making space a little more accessible, each one bringing us closer to becoming a truly spacefaring civilization. I'm curious, did you watch the Apollo moon landings live? Do you remember where you were when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon? And how does it feel now to see rockets routinely landing and launching again? Write it in the comments, I'd love to hear your stories. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a subscription. Next week we'll talk about the mysterious interstellar comet 3I Atlas and why a Harvard professor believes it might be an alien probe.